Thank you very much and uh, good day everyone um, and thank you very much uh, for the cup um, cut for meal for uh, giving us time to uh, make this intervention um, so I will just speak for a few minutes a little bit on some of the work that we're doing at the World Bank that I really think could be of interest to the kind of stakeholders that we have under this forum um, so I'll speak specifically uh, on this soil organic carbon uh, MRV guidance that we have uh, recently put out. Um, I'll start first of all by why we think this kind of work is important and why we have actually gone on uh, to do it as number one. Um, and secondly, give you a very short um, summary of what this is, uh, of course, and then to end with a little bit of some recommendations on things that we think are important for stakeholders to this forum to be able to engage in to uh, enable soil organic carbon accounting uh, protocols to be incorporated in projects, particularly in developing countries where we have a lot of uh, our work at the World Bank. So just by way of background, in terms of what our motivation is and why we're interested in this, I think the primary issue that agriculture and food systems really have a lot of multiple challenges that they're having to address and have to deal with, one of them being feeding 10 billion people by 2050, having to do that without using more land, while also lowering uh, greenhouse gas emissions under the pressure of climate change and reduced water uh, and increased water stress. I think this really makes it very clear that we need our food systems to be transformed in such a way that they work better for people, for the planet, um, as well as for, for, for economies. And so, Soils in this regard, investment in soil health, particularly uh, in uh, practices and interventions that could really help to boost soil organic uh, carbon are really important because of the multiple benefits that they provide. Climate change mitigation, of course, being one of them, but also biodiversity, uh, supporting agriculture productivity, as well as incomes for farmers, which is something that is particularly in of interest to our client uh, countries. So, Investments in soil health, of course, are a no-brainer. And taking it to climate change, particularly natural climate solutions, as we would probably all know, are very, very important to be able to address climate change and be able to meet the Paris Agreement. So in addition to uh, cutting on fuel fuels, it's also very important to seriously consider uh, natural climate solutions. First of all, because they can contribute more than 30% uh, of the cost-effective mitigation that we need uh, to meet the Paris Agreement. And of course, within those natural climate solutions, soils are a very important segment of that, which is why we have an interest in that. Yet, of course, we do know that investments in, 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 in soils are still very fairly limited and they are coming in quite slow. And so we are interested in understanding how we could drive more uh, investments in soil health. And of course, to really understand this a little bit better, we have been engaging with a number of different stakeholders, including uh, meetings and conferences that we've organized, uh, co organized together with CADPMU to really try and understand what could drive these investments. And I think one main thing that really comes out of that is we need strong business case uh, for investments in soils, either from the private sector and from the public sector. And of course, on the farmer side, we really need strong, compelling uh, value cases for them to be able to take the kind of practices that we need for them to take on, and of course, to be able to maintain them over long periods of time. So on the investor side, it's very clear we need um, really robust soil carbon accounting uh, protocols. But of course, these are also quite challenging. They're also quite costly, but they're very important and they're needed. And on the other side of farmers, who will need to convince to be able to take on the practices that are really necessary to be able to um, you know, to enhance soil carbon, uh, whether it's for climate change mitigation or for productivity, which would probably be attractive for them, but also for the environmental benefits that come out of that. So this then brings in the idea of what kind of incentives do we need to actually put in place to be able to incentivize this kind of a transition. So we have been thinking quite a little bit about how these MRV systems can be set up and what kind of finance models might be useful for bringing that together. 
And so part of this guidance that I just mentioned earlier in the very beginning focuses a little bit about that. And the idea here for us is for teams that are really implementing agricultural projects for soil organic carbon accounting to be an integral part of those uh, kind of projects so that we could really track the impact of investments, particularly on the soil uh, organic car carbon side of things. And of course, we think a lot about this from a finance and investment perspective. And so the guidance that we've just put out, this is a very short summary of what that actually looks like to try and understand. So what are the methods uh, and approaches that really need to be used to be set up uh, in these projects, whether it's uh, through field measurements or modeling approaches, or simply using lookup tables, what, are, what should uh, project managers really be investing in depending on what uh, their sort of financing goal and outcome really is. And just for an example, for an instance, if one was interested simply in reporting to a donor, would just using lookup table or simply developing lookup tables and a little bit of uh, field measurement as well as modeling be useful to be able to do that. And of course, you know, the cost and the accuracy and complexity of the kind of methods and approaches that would then be used will themselves depend entirely on what the goal is, where access to carbon markets, for instance, would really require that you have very strong field measurements as well as modeling uh, in addition to that. Um, and so thinking about that in practice and actually putting these in, in projects and really deploying the soil organic carbon accounting uh, in projects, particularly in developing countries, it's also very clear that there are a number of different challenges that need to be overcome. And I think these are things that are important um, for the stakeholders to this forum. Uh, so for, any, for an instance, if you're talking about soil organic carbon direct measurements, these are, there's gonna be issues to do with infrastructure as well as the cost primary uh, of setting this up. And so these need to be overcome. And of course, there are a number of these, uh, technologies that are coming up now um, that could really be useful for that. And so supporting these technologies investing in these technologies is important. If we come to the monitoring itself, we're gonna to need to be able to have activity data. We're gonna to need to be able to have baselines. And these are also uh, a pretty big challenge. Uh, but of course, remote sensing, open databases could also be very useful for that. Um, and on the modeling side, of course, technical capacities in developing countries could really be challenging and these all need to be addressed. So in closing, um, thinking about it in that regard, in terms of, really setting up soil organic carbon accounting in projects and making this to become uh, a general process that happens in a lot of uh, agriculture projects in developing countries. We are gonna have to think very seriously about how we can dramatically reduce costs of setting up these uh, accounting uh, systems and protocols. And so there needs to be a lot of investments that goes into that. And I think emerging technologies are a very important area to, to really look into strongly as well. And of course, these protocols need to be accessible, they need to be embedded in local systems, need to be relatable to farmers. And so having integrated data systems, database systems are also going to be very important to make these frameworks accessible. And finally, I think issues of capacity are, are, are a very big issue in developing countries. And whether it's capacity of farmers or capacity of local institutions, which will all be needed in order to be able to deploy um, soil organic carbon uh, MRV systems in developing countries, this capacity needs to be quite a lot of investment in capacity as well. So just to close, I will end by uh, speaking a little bit about what we are doing with this work going forward at the World Bank. We have um, embedded the ideas of soil, soil health, soil organic carbon in our climate change action plan, which we released just a few months ago for the next five years. Um, and, and so SOs are really front and center in that is one of the key uh, natural climate solutions that we really need to work on. We also have a very strong focus on impact going forward. So I think MRV, M&E protocols also become a very important component of that. And so we are working presently with our country teams to try and pilot soil organic carbon MRV protocols in our projects as a way to try and um, you know, really track the impacts of investments in soil organic carbon. I will take a pause here and uh, hand this uh, back over to you. Thank you very much for, for the time and for allowing me to speak. Thank you.